All right, I don't understand. Um, sometimes the front panel works like you think it might work and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so let me show you a little bit closer up here. There we go. Uh, that last digit there, I can get a four, five, six, and seven. Um, so I, I don't know, I'm, I'm writing the same numbers to each character location and now this one seems to be working, but it doesn't always work. Uh, seems like it needs to warm up. <laughs> I mean, I was I was in the office and writing the software, and then I brought it out the garage and it stopped working, and I took it back in there, and then it wasn't working there either. And then I just left it on for a long time, and then now it's working. And I brought it out here, and now it's working. So maybe there's a loose connection, a cold solder joint. Uh, I, I, I don't know. But anyway, uh, it's encouraging, though. Um, the, the first three numbers, of course, we can do zero through nine, and then that last one we can do uh, four, five, six, seven. Anyway, uh, I think the next thing to do is to start playing with the, um, with the D to A and see if we can't get voltage out of this thing. Oh, and I did figure out that, yeah, that is really an off button. Uh, if you click this to here, it actually does turn off the radio. Uh, what a lousy, lousy on off button. Uh, you have to either go duplex and off or and if you go too far, it's, I don't know, it's just really, really brain dead on off button. Um, and it doesn't turn the voltage all the way off either, uh, because there's still a little bit of current going in there that seems to power up the Arduino a little bit, which probably isn't very healthy for it. So I got to figure out a little bit better way to do the, uh, do the on off button. But uh, yeah, this project is just for fun. Um, I don't really have any great, uh, you know, long-term goals for it other than it's really really fun to be playing with i put a new brain in it uh and uh, be able to play with the, uh, the vco and stuff so anyway i'm still having fun okay uh so i got the uh the dac working in the uh in the office uh using my old uh, sony scope and um let's see here the part number is an mcp 4725 um and it's a 12-bit dac they're, they're super, super cheap. I've got, I don't know, I've got a dozen of them just kind of laying around. Um, so I'm using one of those. And you can configure it for different I squared C addresses. So you can use uh, two of them. Uh, they default to, if the blob is on one side, it's uh, 60 hex. And if the blob is on the other side, I think it's 62 hex. This is 60 hex here. Um, so this is the uh, output of the DAC right now. And I just have it doing a, a step. And uh, let's see, zoom in a bit here. Um, it's doing a 128 step to 4095. So 0 to 4095. And it's uh, 0 to 5 volts. Uh, those are 1 volt steps. Okay. So uh, the next thing to do is then to um, focus. Yeah. Uh, the next thing to do then is to put in this uh, op amp and see if we can't get the uh, voltage range uh, in the uh, in the spot that we want. So I'm going to put that one on a socket. I haven't put any sockets on anything else, but I'm going to put a socket on that one. Um, and I'm going to be using a TLC072. Is that what the part number is? I'll make sure I read it again. But it, it, it's the uh, the one that's good to uh, of single voltage rails. All right, so I have the uh, part in here and I'm monitoring the output. And I am getting a uh, sawtooth. Now, it's going through inverting amplifier. So instead of the wave going up, the wave is now going down because it gets flipped by the inverter. But you can see that the voltage range is reduced. Instead of going between 0 and 5 volts, it's going between 3 volts and 4 volts, which is low. So if I change the, uh, the offset, I can make it go... It can make the bottom go higher, but the top is flat spotting. So this op amp will not let me go to five volts. So I think that's one of the design changes I will have to make. I think I will have to run that, um, that op amp off of the 13 volts that I have. Uh, so I'll need to, uh, I'll need to cut and jump that. I think that's an easy thing to do on the board. I'll put, uh, Put more voltage on that op amp, and we'll be able to get it going higher. And uh, I think the offset will. Let's see if I can take the offset all the way to four volts. I'm looking at the bottom 
and seeing if I can bring that bottom. Oh, I need to go into auto mode. I'm not triggering mode. Single auto, here we go. Let me, uh, let me see if I can bring that offset all the way up to four volts. I think I can. Oops. I need the right tool for this and I don't have it in my hand. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be able to get there. So I just need more headroom. Uh, oh well. It's worth a try. <laughs> All right, uh, I cut the pin eight, the trace on pin eight, which was VCC, and I cut that and I wired it over to uh, the, the uh, incoming 13 volts. And so this thing's operating between zero and 13 volts now. And I have the uh, offset set to four volts and it does what I want it to do. Uh, it swings between five and four volts. Um, or four or five volts, however you want to say it. It's uh, doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing, so I'm in good shape. Uh, just had to add one bodge wire. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, I've written some more firmware here. Uh, because the uh, DAC goes between 0 and 4095, when I, when I reset, I'm going to set the DAC to 2000. And then if I hit this button, uh, it'll count up. If I hit this button, it'll count down. Okay, so now you know why I put those two buttons in there. Um, and then if I push them both down, it should do a sweep. All right, so let's do the reset. We're at 2000. All right, I think you can see that. We have our marker uh, at 134.020, so 134 megahertz. Uh, 134 megahertz plus 10.7, remember. That's 144.7, so we're at 144.7 right now, all right? And then if I hit the up button, so we're counting up, and it's very, very touchy. Uh, it takes a lot of counts to move just a little bit in frequency, so you see it's going to the left there, because remember we're, in, we're inverted. I'll go back to 2000 and then I'll go the other direction. And we should go a little bit high in frequency as we count up and you see it's moving a little bit high, very, very slowly. Okay, now if I push both buttons down, it does a sweep. Very cool. All right, so let's do a trace, hold, sweep. So those are all of the frequencies that we're outputting right now. And we could choose any one of those frequencies very stably. Um, so we'll do marker. We can go anywhere from about 135.3. 135.3. That's 146 megahertz. That's 146 megahertz. And we can go all the way down to here. 132. 0.75. That's 143.5. So it's still a little bit low. So we need to we need to fiddle with the offset and gain of that uh, op amp in order to have this match the uh, match the two meter uh, range. But for right now, it's fine. Right now, it's telling us it's telling and doing exactly what we what we want it to do. We're able to actually program the VCO. We can actually sweep the VCO, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, let's do that again. There it goes. Could sweep the VCO. And um, now the next step is to be able to actually uh, measure the frequency with the Arduino. Um, so we need to figure out how to do that. Um, we might need a divider circuit. We might need a uh, amplifier circuit. We might need a Schmidt trigger. Um, we might need several things in order to actually catch those waveforms. I'm not quite sure how to do that yet, so that's the next fun thing to do. Um, but so far, so far the project's been working out pretty fun. Um, okay, let me give a brief introduction here in case people haven't been watching the whole series. Um, I've removed the PLL section out of the radio, and what I'm doing is I'm controlling the front panel with these uh, lines here. But there's a VCO that, that, that is run by a phase lock, used to be run by a phase lock loop, and it requires a voltage input, right? It's a VCO, voltage control oscillator. So we're going to use an Arduino and a 12-bit a a DAC 
to send voltages to the uh, to the VCO, and we're going to move the frequency. Um, and then we will calibrate it so we, we know what voltage is, e is equal to what frequency. And then we want to close that loop. We want to say, okay, we actually want to measure the frequency that the VCO is oscillating at. And if it starts to drift up or drift down, we can modify uh, the, uh, the DAC and, and, and keep it stable. So it'll be a closed loop. It won't be a phase lock loop, but it'll be a closed loop system. And it should be plenty, plenty fast enough to do anything you'd want to do. Um, so yeah, that's the next step is to try to put in a frequency measuring unit.